We all need decent shakers, whether that's for hip hop and R&B, pop music, drum and bass, bass music, trance, house, techno, EDM, whatever. We all need decent shakers. And we all know what it's like when the shakers aren't quite up to the job. They're either a little bit too harsh, a little bit too thin, a little bit too scratchy, or perhaps you just need them to be that little bit sweeter, brighter, smoother, wider, fuller, tighter, funkier. Well, I have a method that works every single time. It's brain dead simple to do and I'm happy to share it with you. We don't need any samples, the main ingredient is white noise. In this case I'm using a test generator plugin, but there's many ways to generate white noise including using a synth, and I've prepared a list of noise generating plugin recommendations in the video description below. Anyway, the next ingredient is a tremolo. Definitely make sure this is set up in mono, with maximum depth, put it into tempo sync mode, and set the sync speed to 1 over 16. Once you've got that basic chugging sound, what you can do is take the tremolo plug-in and duplicate it to make the sound even tighter. And you can do that as many times as you feel necessary. Every instance of the tremolo plug-in will tighten up the sound a little bit further. Now, I should note that I'm working at 120 beats per minute here, and that's just because it's the default. You should work at whatever tempo your track is at, because then you'll know how tight to go with the tremolo. Also, it's important to note that there will be an opportunity to refine the shape a little bit later on into the process. As you can see, I'm using four consecutive instances of the basic tremolo plugin that comes with Cubase. Now I'll need a fifth instance of tremolo. I'm going to set the speed to 1 over 4 bring the depth down maybe to about 75% and this should just give it enough movement so that it's more pleasant to listen to for the next stage. Obviously this doesn't sound quite like the perfect shaker just yet but you can think of this stage as sort of preparing the canvas. Again, I'm not trying to dictate to you what your rhythm should be, you can refine all of that later on once we've got the basic sound. EQ is the next ingredient. We'll start with a low pass filter, also known as a high cut filter of course, and the magic number to remember is 12. To begin with, we want a 12 decibel filter at 12 kilohertz. You'll need some resonance as well, so let's push that Q control upwards. Now normally shakers have a high frequency bump and that's what we're going to achieve with the resonance on this filter. And hey, why not? Let's just go with a Q factor of 12. So it's an easy starting point. 12 decibels per octave, high cut filter at 12 kilohertz with a Q factor of 12. All of these things can be tweaked to suit the mix later on, but it's a great starting point. The next thing we'll need is a low shelf filter, and we'll take the gain all the way down to the bottom, push the resonance up maybe about halfway, and then find a nice frequency. This has a huge effect on the tonality of the sound, and it actually starts to sound like a real shaker sound. And there's plenty of scope for really fine tuning. I did say we'd get the perfect shakers, and this is a huge part of how we'll achieve that. I have to warn you about the several ways you can muck this whole thing up. Firstly, don't use a high pass filter. I've specifically said a high cut filter and a low shelf filter. You do not want to remove all of the low frequencies. You only want to soften them somewhat. I could get into the deep reasons about why that is, but that's really outside the scope of this tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about EQ, I've got videos about EQ, go and check those out. Next, do not set these filters in solo. Ideally, you want to listen in the context of your mix so you know how high to go with the high cut filter. If you go too low then it sounds distant or dull. If you go too high then it can be irritating and too sharp. You want to find the perfect spot for the cutoff of the high cut filter. Same goes for the resonance amount. If you use too much resonance it can be a bit sharp, it can be a bit whistly, and if you don't use enough resonance then it won't really cut through the mix. So if you're looking for perfection it is possible but you must fine tune these filters in the context of the mix. You'll notice as well that you probably don't need the low shelf filter to go all the way down to the bottom. You probably can raise it quite a lot without destroying the mix. Now that totally depends on the genre, the tempo, the groove, the other sounds you have in the mix. So I can't give you a specific value that's always going to be perfect. That is the whole point of this method. The idea is to create bespoke shakers for the particular track that you're working on. Anyway, the next ingredient is a bit of a secret weapon and that's a comb filter. Now as long as you turn the feedback all the way down, what this 
effectively does is it pokes holes in the frequency spectrum. And you can use this again as another way of fine tuning the tonality. And I would always recommend that you use only a little bit of the wet mix on the comb filter plugin. And again, I'm assuming you won't be tweaking this in isolation, but in the context of your production, and it will really help to slot your shakers into the mix. Once you've got a shaker tonality you're happy with, what you can do is pan the audio track all the way to the hard left, and then duplicate the track, and pan the duplicate all the way to the other side. Now the reason why this creates a pleasing stereo image is because the white noise generator will be random on each side, meaning that the left channel and the right channel have completely independent signals. You could go further by changing the EQ settings or the comb settings, but that's not really necessary. There's a perfectly wide stereo image here with no weird artifacts whatsoever. We could just record it into a piece of audio. And now we have essentially two basic choices for what we can do next. We can either zoom right in and find one burst of noise that we're going to use as a one shot shaker sample, or we can split this into multiple parts and use the individual parts so that we have some variation between shaker hits. Now for the record, my recommendation would generally be just take one chunk and use that. You can stick that in the sampler, refine the sample start time, refine the amplitude envelope and fine-tune the rhythm using MIDI.